guys, what's up? This is Ardi Roberto, and I'm really, really happy, honored, and excited to be invited to speak to you all for your school's chapel time. So let me start by asking you guys a question. So it is 40 years from now, and it's the year 2061, and you can travel back to today and give yourself some advice. So the question is, what advice do you think you'd be giving yourself? <laughs> now, some of you are stumped. You know, I'm sure I would be too. But you know what? I asked myself that question too. You know, what if I could travel back to the year 1981 when I was 40 years old and give myself advice, knowing what I know now? Don't waste time. Instead of stumbling around asking yourself, you know, what do I want to do or be when I grow up? You know, spend your time discovering and learning what it is that you think God wants you to do. So parents here who are listening, instead of asking your kids, what do you want to do or be when you grow up? Ask them, what do you think God wants you to be? And I should know because when I asked God that question, it changed my life drastically. So stay with me until the end of this talk and I'll share with you how. Because his promise is this. It says, ask and you shall receive. Knock and the door will be opened. Seek and you shall find. So as early as now, while you're still young, go on an adventure to seek and find out what you were made to do. Choose to live wisely. You know, King Solomon said in um, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20, he says, walk with the wise and become wise for a companion of fools suffers harm. And the message version says, become wise by walking with the wise and, but you know, hang out with fools and you will watch your life fall to pieces. So I know some of you boys or girls are thinking about maybe hanging out with someone exclusively. So I also tell my 14 year old self, you know, to stop daydreaming about that girl. <laughs> Why? It's not your time. In fact, you'll waste time because you're going to have your heart broken and you're going to spend so much time getting your heart unbroken. Just like Humpty Dumpty, you wait on top of the wall watching pretty girls go by and you fall. And it will take all the king's horses and all the king's men to put your heart back together again. And for the girls, vice versa, you can find what you're good at. Seek God and ask him what gift he has given to you. To so encourage you, here are some examples of three young people who are doing just that. Okay, I'm thinking of my my friend uh, Luigi Tabuena, his son Miguel Tabuena. He started to play golf at the age of five or six and continued playing golf. He loved it so much, you know, under the junior golf program. And you know what? Now today, uh, he's continually learning how to improve what he loves to do, which is playing golf as a professional. You know, he turned pro when he was just 16 years old. He's today, he's 26 and he's been doing it for 10 years. And I have another good friend. His name is uh, Jet. His son, Enzo, loves basketball and making videos at the same time. You know, he combined those two loves and three years ago, he launched his own YouTube channel commenting about basketball games in the NBA and PBA. Um, and he started doing that at the age of 12, you know, about three years ago. You know, he's still in high school today, but he has started to earn 50,000 pesos a month from his YouTube channel while learning how to be very good at video editing. Or one more example. I met this young man named Efren and a long time ago, whom I once invited to speak at my one of my seminars, okay? Uh, son of a housewife and tricycle driver. He grew up in a squatter area, in fact. And he was bullied as, as a child growing up, but he decided not to waste his time, you know, trying to fit in or, uh, or, or get the approval of his classmates. So he focused on his studies. He got a scholarship and, and in 1997, at 16 years old, Efren Peña Florida started a youth group in his high school aimed at diverting students' attention away from street gangs and towards personal growth and lifelong learning. He was joined by other classmates and they named the group Dynamic Team Company. And so the Dynamic Team Company started as a friendship club of around 20 members and eventually pioneered the idea of the you know, pushcart classroom, you know, where these caritons were stocked with school materials such as, you know, books and, and pens and tables and chairs. And on Saturdays, they would go to the cemeteries and, and, and trash dumps where these out-of-school kids were and they would recreate school settings. It was wonderful. He loved doing that, working with kids and helping them. So, you know what? In 2009, Peña Florida was nominated for CNN Heroes of the Year. And after sifting through 9,000 nominees from over 100 countries, CNN's Blue Ribbon Committee, they selected Peña Florida as one of its 10 finalists. And later on at the grand finals, he was voted CNN Hero of the Year for 2009. How cool is that? On top of that, you know, he got an award a cash award of $100,000 to continue his work with the Dynamic Team Company. And until today, more than 10 years later, that is what he's still doing now. 
So those three young people I mentioned have some common denominators. First, they did not spend time or energy searching for love or approval in a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship. But instead, they all found the best kind of love in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Second, they also fell in love with learning, not just a school kind of learning, but learning how to be better in the gifts and talents that God had given them. And third, those three, Miguel, Enzo, and Efren, they honored and obeyed their parents and mentors because they discovered early on in life that obedience brings blessings. The psalmist reminds us, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Or as the Living Bible puts it, teach us to number our days and recognize how few they are. Help us to spend them as we should. The book Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell calls this principle the 10,000 hour principle. Basically, it says spend 10,000 hours learning and practicing a skill and you become an expert at it. You know, so do the math. You know, it's just two and a half to three hours of practice a day, learning how to do what you think you're gifted at. And after 10 years of doing that, you'll be an expert at it. So if you start at the age of 14 and by the age of 24, you'll be an expert at it. You'll be the Elon Musk or the Jeff Bezos of that, whatever it is that, you would, that you've been gifted to do. So don't waste time. When you're young, you think you have all the time in the world to spend or to waste. And how I wish I had heard and followed this advice when I was your age. Because actually, when I was about 15, after reading what I wrote for a journalism assignment, you know, my high school teacher encouraged me and told me that I was a good writer and that I should keep on writing. And maybe I should have seen that already as a sign from God, but you know what? I got distracted. But that gave me a chance to redeem the time, even though I wrote for a magazine as one of my first jobs. It was only when I was in my late 30s that I started writing books and producing seminars. And in my 40s, I became a best-selling and award-winning author. But you know what was the turning point? It's when I asked God, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to be? And just being able to ask that question was quite liberating. It set me free to seek and learn what God's will and purpose for my life was. You know why I look for a Bible after I ask God that question? Because God speaks to us through his word, through the Bible. The Bible is a speaking book. Read it and God will speak to you through it. Psalm 26, 7 says that I may publish with a voice of thanksgiving and speak of all thy wondrous works. <laughs> How God had spoken, I was to publish and speak, write and tell. And true enough, as I wrote and published books, the people who read my books would end up inviting me to speak about those topics that I wrote about. Along the way to fulfilling God's purpose in my life, to to write and to speak, to publish, and to tell, I got sidetracked. I started a couple of new businesses. It was good, and but after making money and being successful and celebrated as an award-winning entrepreneur, I forgot all about Psalm 26-7. And I was feeling quite confused, actually. So during a vacation to the Holy Land, I, I asked God th that question again. Lord, what do you want me to do with my life? And so I was at a sanctuary in Mount Carmel Church in Haifa, Israel, and I just listened to a message from the pastor of the church when I asked that question. And while kneeling at the front of the altar to pray and wait on the Lord for his answer, I heard God speak in my heart. And he said, if you really want to know again, I already told you before, but if you want to know again, look for the pastor. Pastor David, the one who gave the message, you know, he's going to tell you for me. So <laughs> I was still kneeling and my eyes were still closed. And I told myself, okay, I'll look for Pastor David and see, if has, and see if he has indeed a message for me. And just as I was about to stand up and look for Pastor David, I felt a hand on my shoulder. And I looked back up, and guess what? It was Pastor David. And before I could say anything to him, he just blurted out firmly to me, you are a writer, and you are a writer for the Lord. Go, write for the Lord. <laughs> and that's how that question changed my life. And so what did I do? I wrote. I poured out my heart and my time into it. And there were so many challenges. It wasn't easy, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Indeed, it was a grand adventure. And these were the results, okay? The heart of healing. Buhay na hindi bitin. Real pera na hindi bitin. Real man or pogi. And the latest one, The Happy Entrepreneur. You know, all these books were birthed in obedience after I asked that question. And as a bonus, I have experienced love life. The two loves of my lives, okay? Not at the same time, but at 28, I married the woman who introduced me to Jesus. 
and who, sadly, after 17 years of marriage, died of lupus and went ahead of me to heaven. So yes, I became a widower and a single parent to my six-year-old son, Joshua. But then at the age of 48, I married the woman who Jesus introduced to me, the one and only Miss Universe of my life. Well, she is actually a Miss Universe uh, winner in 1999. She won first one up. Go and Google her, okay? So in closing, I say to you guys, live like the wise. Don't waste time. Instead, pour time into learning what you are called to do and be. I know it's hard to do, but like the Apostle Paul and now even Steph Curry says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And guys, if you're not yet in a personal relationship with Christ, let me share with you how to do that. It's simple as ABC. First, A, admit that you are a sinner. No exceptions. The scripture says, for all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. It is sin that keeps us away from a relationship with God. It separates us from eternity, from heaven. And so we can't rely on ourselves to save ourselves. Next is B. B is to believe. Believe that Jesus died for their sins. You know, God loved you and I so much that he sent his only son, Jesus, to die and pay the penalty of our sins, of your sins. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. The next step is C, which is to confess. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That is the Bible's promise. That is his word. Believe his word. Admit, believe, and confess. So my question is, when will you be ready to do that? When? Why not do that right now? You know, I'll help and lead you. Just pray along this prayer with me. Say, Lord, I admit that I am a sinner and that I can save myself. Please forgive me of my sins because right now I put my trust in you and believe in my heart that you died for my sins because you love me so much. So I confess with my mouth that you are Lord and that you are my Savior. Help me live a life that is pleasing to you. I promise to commit my life to you, Jesus. So help me live my life to the fullest for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. How do you feel? You know, if you said that prayer, your name is written in the book of life. Not my books, but in God's book. And that's a wonderful thing. Again, I, it's been a, I've been a wonderful, wonderful time being with you, even if it's just virtually. And I pray and hope that one day that you and I will, will meet face to face. Maybe I can visit your school in the future when this pandemic is over. So thank you so much for having me. And God bless you.